Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. That moment changed my life forever. I went from having nothing to having my dreams come true. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and had more money than I knew what to do with. I finally hit rock bottom when I almost died from a drug overdose, and it became painfully obvious something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. God instantly delivered me from drugs and totally turned my life around. I began to use my gift of music for the Lord and started a Christian band, Mylon and Broken Heart. It eventually grew to be one of the biggest Christian rock bands in the world at the time. We won several Grammys and Dove Awards, but most importantly, we led over 200,000 kids to Christ. Now, years later, I'm still living for Jesus and my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. I've been from rock bottom to the mountaintop and I'm going all the way to heaven. So come on and join me on the road to freedom. Welcome to On the Road to Freedom. We're so glad you decided to join us today. As you can see, we're here at Magnificent Caddo Lake on yeah, the Texas-Louisiana border. We've been riding around this morning, taping and filming in different locations, and this place constantly amazes me. Yeah. There are places where it looks like you could get out of the boat and go for a walk, but yeah. it's actually grass growing on top of the water. Mm -hmm. I think he calls it Salvinia grass. <laughs> And there are lotus flowers that grow out of the lily pads. They are so cool. Mm -hmm. And of course, then you see these big herons and and, and all kind of Beautiful. pelicans. And I don't know, you know. I'm, <laughs> are they not pelicans? What are they? <laughs> Lake, Lake birds. birds. Okay. <laughs> we call them yard birds where I grew up. Um, anyway, we just want to share some holy information with you today. That's what Revelation is. We are so thankful that you would allow us to discuss the Lord and His Lordship in our lives for the next 30 minutes. And we're gonna have a good time. This is good news, we don't have any bad news. The gospel means good, good news. news yeah. So we believe in having fun. We come to these pretty places. We could be sitting in a church house or at a desk with a cup of coffee and there's nothing wrong with that. And from time to time, we will do that. Mm -hmm. But we like to take you to pretty places to show you how creative God is. And we can look at each other and see how creative God is and what a good sense of humor he has. But uh, we wanted to share with you today uh, some information about staying planted. We're going to call this in a day, In God We Trust. And of course, the reason is because unless you do trust God, you won't stay planted. You'll be constantly looking for that grass that's always greener on the other side of the fence. We slowed down for just a minute because this really cool boat is coming by <laughs> and I wanted to check it out. Hey. That's what it's like on the lake every once in a while. That's what it's like in life. You're doing one thing and all of a sudden yeah. something else is going on. Unexpected. And how well you manage the things going on around you yeah. is going to determine, cool, huh? <laughs> is going to determine whether you enjoy your life or whether you're constantly frustrated. Mm -hmm. You know, some That's people, good. they describe their life as basically survival. They're putting up with these hardships and they're, they're getting through this and I made it from Friday to Friday and yeah, I paid the bills, but I don't know what I'm gonna do next month and I don't know how I'm gonna put up with so-and-so and what she said that they said that we said that and we didn't really say that and it ain't fair and blah, blah, blah. And you can spend your whole life suffering and frustrated or right. is the only other choice. Yeah. You can trust God enough to find out how much He loves you and if you do that, you will read the one book that he wrote, the only book that God wrote. It's called the Holy Bible. And if you stay in the New Testament, that's the one written to us now. Now that Jesus has come, mm -hmm. the New Testament, you should spend more of your time there because that was written to us, the church of Jesus Christ. And there are even a group of books in the New Testament called the epistles, and they're written specifically to the church. And they teach us about everyday life. Proverbs gives you so much wisdom. And that's all we're doing. We're trying to share with you 
how to live. And if you trust God, you'll let him change the way you think. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where you came from. Thank God I'm not that man anymore. Yeah. The day that I got born again, God forgave me of my sins. He cleansed me from all unrighteousness. I quit doing things that I knew were wrong, but I didn't really know what to do with my life. And therefore, in order to enjoy my life, I had to learn a new way of living. Mm -hmm. And in order to learn a new way of acting and reacting, that's life, mm -hmm. you have to learn a new way of thinking. Yeah, that's and true. And God calls that the renewing of your minds. In other words, Roman 12 says this. It says, be not conformed to the world. Don't be like the world. But be ye transformed, changed by the renewings of your mind in Christ Jesus. In other words, if you'll learn to think like God, you'll start acting like him. You, you get the mind of Christ, you learn to think like Jesus, mm -hmm. you'll start acting like him, you'll start doing the, his works in the earth. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll tell you, if you're a husband, your wife will like you better if you start acting like Jesus. <laughs> if you're a father, a brother, a son, everybody will like you better yeah. as you get your mind renewed and start thinking like the Lord. You want to read us our verse in Jeremiah, babe? Sure, it's in Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8, and it says, Most blessed is the man... That's who I want to be. That's right, amen. Come on. Most blessed is the man who believes in, who trusts and relies on the Lord, and whose hope and confidence the Lord is. That means we don't yeah. put our confidence in the government. We don't put our confidence in Money. our employer or our bank statement. Our confidence is in the Lord. Yeah. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters. Oh my goodness, all of these trees are such a great example of these trees are planted by the water. Yeah. That spreads out its roots by the river and it shall not see and fear when heat comes, you know, because the trials and the, the tribulation, they come to all of us. That's right. But this person who's planted in the word of God shall not see and fear when those trials come, but its leaf shall be green and it shall not be anxious and full of care Amen. in those times of trial. That's right. In the year of drought or a year where it looks like your needs aren't being met, this person is not anxious and full of care, nor shall it cease yielding fruit. That's right. And that's, that's our desire that's to called. keep producing what? The life of God. Right. The will of God. That's all I want to do. I want to do the will of God. And I used to think if I do the will of God that I wouldn't enjoy it, that I would miss out on the party. What I found out as I've learned to trust God is I've entered the party. And it's going to last forever. One of these days, I'm going to close yeah. my eyes on this planet mm -hmm. and I'm going to wake up in heaven. That's when it's really going to get started. Yeah. But in the meantime, I, this party that I'm going to, you never have a hangover. You <laughs> never uh, wreck your car because you were drunk the night before and you don't wake up in jail. Yeah. I mean, it is an amazing place, this Very. kingdom of God that we live in. When you obey God, when you trust God, you don't have to be begging God to fix it all the time. Yeah. I spent Thank most of Jesus. my early Christian life asking God to fix the mess I'd made because I had disobeyed him and ignored him. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that I was anti-Christ. I wasn't against God. I always believed there was a God. I always believed that Jesus was his son, but I ignored him and I didn't do anything he told me to do. I just did what I thought was best and what I thought was right and what made me a good guy in my own sight. But that's not the truth and therefore the truth did not set me free. The word of God is the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Psalm 103 says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. Mm -hmm. And then in the first three, it says, forget not all of the promises of God uh, or the benefits of being a child of God. He starts listening to the benefit. First one is he forgives all my sins. And I think every Christian believes that God, you, if he just forgave some of them, you'd still go to hell. God yeah. forgives all of our oh, sins. Thank you, Lord. When we confess our sins, yes. He's faithful and just to forgive them. Mm -hmm. And then the next verse says, He heals all my diseases. Oh. Now, here's the one where Christians have trouble sometimes. And I think most Christians believe that until, of course, some symptoms or the doctor disagrees or a blood test or a right, CAT right. scan said it's not working for you. But let me just remind you, if you don't believe you're still healed when the doctor says you're not, mm. then you never did believe that by his stripes you were healed. Yeah, that's 
stripes. When God says, and he did, by his stripes you were healed, you have a right to believe that you are healed, which means until the manifestation of that healing comes in your body, you're in the fight of faith. Now you're gonna find out whether you really believe mm -hmm. God or whether you just believe there is a God. Yeah, because true. believing there is a God, that's true. Mm -hmm. But if you believe God's word, that's what we're supposed to have faith in. Yeah, we yeah. have faith in what God says. If God says you're healed and your body says you're not, then you gotta decide what you believe and who you believe. Mm -hmm. I've had to do this myself. I wouldn't be 73 years old. I would not be here today have I ha had I not learned to live by faith. Yeah. And that's what the Bible says the just are supposed to do, to live by faith. So I want to encourage you to continue doing that. Amen. John 8 and verse 32. Why don't you share that with us, baby? It says, if you will continue... In my word, this is uh, where we got the title for this show, On the Road to Freedom, because Jesus said, if you will continue in my word, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. So the more that we continue in the word, the freer we get. That's why it's so important that we refuse to quit. If we're gonna stay planted and really be fruitful and have lives that are fruitful for the Lord, um, which is His will, uh, I want to read you what Acts 20, 24 said. And Paul said this in the midst of suffering, great suffering and great persecution. We've been talking about there will be times of challenges or, or trials that we all face. But Jesus said, you can be of good cheer because I've overcome the world mm. and I've deprived it of the power to harm you. Good, buddy. So in Acts 20, 24, Paul said in the midst of great persecution, he said, none of these things move me. That's it. And this is so important. Again, we've been giving you the visuals of these trees being planted That's right. and the root system going deep. And this will keep you planted. None of these things move me. Yes. And neither do I esteem my life dear to myself. Now, here's the key. If only I may finish my course with joy. This is so important for all of us. We need to be determined and decide that we're going to finish our course and not just survive it, not just get through life and do the will of God. God said here, do it with joy. Yeah. I want you to finish with joy, right. enjoy serving me, enjoy, enjoy being doing my will. Yeah. And that's why we're in these beautiful places so that you can really taste and see that the Lord is good and that your life will be blessed when you choose to trust Him. L let me say again, I don't have to be a Christian. I remember how to sin. Mm -hmm. I just found something so much better than sin, I don't want to do it anymore. I really want to enjoy yeah. the life of God. Yeah. Being a Christian is awesome. Yeah, it is. And I'm having so much fun serving God with <laughs> you. Amen, I'm too. Mm. <laughs> So this is so key. I want to just give you a few more scriptures. The reason why we give you so much word, let me say this. Hebrews 4, 2 says that we join our faith with the word that we hear. That's Never right. man's opinion because our opinion will not change your life. No. But the truth of God's word will. Yes. So we join our faith with the word. So that's why Miley and I always make sure you have plenty of word, the rock of God's word to stand on. But also, uh, let me just remind you that, you know, the word says that if you, if you hear the word and don't do it, you deceive yourself. If you hear the Word of God and you don't live according to what you hear, it doesn't do you any good and it doesn't set you free. You'll end up with what we call religion. You go hang out under a steeple and you, and you, and you maybe get baptized and you go through the motions and, mm -hmm. and you do all kind of nice stuff, but you have none of the power of God in your life. In order to please God, you got to believe that He is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Yeah. The more that you seek the Lord, the more you read his word, and the more that you work on submitting to it mm -hmm. and being a peaceful person, being a kind person, being a, a, basically a spirit-filled, led person, then the more that God will reward you, and not just in heaven, but in the earth. Yeah. He wants to bless you. He is a good father, and he is in love with you, man. And he will do that if you'll let him go. Amen. Recently, we were in Sedona, Arizona, filming 
and we got stranded. By the time we got to the airport, they'd canceled the flight, but we had no cell coverage driving the 100 miles up to the airport in Flagstaff. And so by the time we got there, all the people who had already knew about it, the flights had been canceled, started rebooking. There was a bad storm in Texas and the airport was closed. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do. Man, the guys had to be back to minister in church the next day. They were gonna rent a car and drive, I think it was 17 hours, to drive back to Dallas all day and all night to get there in time for church Sunday morning so they could do their ministry. And so I didn't know what to do, but I started praying about it. And the Lord said, Brother Copeland would want to know this. Call him and tell him. And I don't ever call and ask for things because he's a big giver. Yes. So I don't try to put pressure on people and take advantage of their generosity. But when I prayed about it again, the Lord said, call him. He would want to know. Yeah. And I called him and immediately, within 20 minutes, he had his jet on the way to Flagstaff and we were home for dinner. Yeah, I mean, God. it was amazing. Praise God. And what he told me, he said, Mon, don't worry about it, son. He said, that's what planes are for. They're just tools. Yeah. And that's why God has entrusted me with one. Yeah. He said, you have not because you ask not. Mm -hmm. And I got to thinking about that and I realized it has been a problem. It's not everybody else's problem, it's been mine. Yeah. I need some partners. Yeah. I need some people who care mm -hmm. and who really truly believe that what we're doing yeah. is reaching the nations Amen. and that we're doing it in a way that they can relate to. People that Amen. believe this is important. Yes. People who understand yeah. that the way we're going about it is going to affect a certain part of the culture. Yeah. And yeah. so if that's you, I'm asking you to join Team Mile, and I'm yeah. asking you to pray about it. I'm not trying to influence your giving. That's between you and God. Yes. And if he tells you to give to another ministry, that's wonderful with us. Yes. But I am asking you to pray about it and see if you're supposed to be a part of this ministry. And if so, come on, man. Yeah. Me and you <laughs> and God and Christy, that's we right. will change the world right. one person at a time, right. just like he changed me and you. Yes. God bless you, man. Thanks for praying about it. And if you want to be a part of Team Milan, you just go to milan.org and click on Team Milan today. says again, uh, this is Paul, I have fought the good fight. Mm -hmm. And it is a good fight because if you don't quit, we win. Come on, man. Amen. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Praise God. That's, mm. that's our goal. That's it. Hebrews 6, 10 through 12 says, For God is not unrighteous mm. to overlook your labor and the love which you have shown for His namesake in ministering to the needs of the saints. Your labor in the Lord is never in vain. It has not been overlooked by Him. Be encouraged today by that. But Paul goes further and says, But we strongly desire for each of you to show the same diligence, the same sincerity and zeal and passion all the way through until the end. So what Paul's saying is what started that passion that began you serving God and the dream and the vision going after it. Paul said, continue with that same zeal, that same diligence all the way through until the end in order that you may not be spiritual sluggards. Now, this is one of my favorite promises concerning refusing to quit, stay and planted in the word of God. Galatians 6, 9 says, and let us not lose heart and grow weary in doing right, in doing the right thing for the right reason with the right attitude. For in due season, we shall reap. That means the reward is on its way. Payday is coming if we don't quit, if we don't give up. Well, baby, you mentioned a moment ago, uh, 2 Timothy 4 and verse 7. I just want to comment on it. Paul said, I fought the good fight and I finished the race. I've kept the faith. Let me give you just a minute. There is a fight of faith. Yeah. We Christians are not supposed to be fighting among ourselves. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that we are not, uh, flesh and blood is not the problem, but we, we're not doing a battle against flesh and blood people. 
people are not our problem, but there is, yeah. we are doing battle against great powers and principalities and rulers of darkness in the unseen it's, world, man. Yeah. They're, in other words, demonic warfare. And we are doing battle, but we're doing it by faith. In other words, if the doctor says you got cancer, you're not doing battle against cancer. You're doing battle against the spirit of fear because when you pray that God will heal you, you're, you're tempted to believe that he might not because you saw other people who had cancer and they were Christians and they didn't get healed. But you don't know what they believed. You don't know. All you know is what you believe. Mm -hmm. I have missed it many times, but God never has. I can tell you that every time I've done what he told me to do, he has blessed me for it because it honors him for me to tell him that I believe he's honest. Yes, and That's yes. what this show is about. In God, we trust. In God. That's who we are. That's yeah. what we do. That's not something that's we do we every live. once in a while. Yeah. That's what we do 24 hours a day. Amen. We try to honor God. Whatever he said, that determines what we're going to do next and how we're going to go about it and how we're going to act, how we're going to react, what we're going to say. And, and our reaction to what everybody else says. So mm -hmm. let me end with this. There is a scripture over in James that I love. Uh, James 1 and verse 25 says, yes. He who looks carefully into the faultless law, the law of liberty or freedom in this case, and is faithful to it and perseveres in looking into it, in other words, studying it, thinking about it, meditating on it, being not a heedless listener who forgets, mm -hmm. but an active doer who okay. obeys, he shall be blessed. That's the will of God concerning you, my brother and sister. God wants you blessed. He or she shall be blessed in their doing, their life of obedience. God wants you blessed so that you can be a blessing, so that you don't have to worry about paying your rent, but so that you can help your family, help your kids, so that mm -hmm. you can help us do things like this and help people who don't yet know how good God is and how much he loves them. Yeah. Man, we love you. Thank you for letting us share the word of God with you today. We had so much fun. We love you. We don't know your name, but God does, and we're praying for you. Yes. We're going to be believing that you're going to stay in the word, and you're going to stay on, on the, the road, road to, to freedom. freedom. been shooting outside here all day and as you can see the sun's gone down it was really warm when we came out here this morning we were just sitting out here in sweaters and shirts and and having a good time teaching the word we've done about 12 15 shows in the last couple of days and done some skiing and some playing and lots of laughing and and eating together and fellowshipping and praying and but man the, at the end of the day here look at this view can you think of a better place to have your life changed? I thought it'd be a really silly thing to do all this teaching, and do all these shows and, and not give anybody a chance to make a decision for Christ. I don't know what's going on in your life, man, but I know that I was sitting on the other side of this camera years ago and I was by myself, man. I'd sit in those hotel rooms. I'd, I was in a rock and roll band and I'd come up after the gig. I was really stoned and it was late at night and I'd flip the TV on and, and I was lonely. I mean, it was amazing. I'd be in some stadium and there'd be 20 or 30,000 people in there and they're all flicking their bick and, and they're holding their flames up and giving you a standing ovation. And then you get in the limo and all of a sudden you're in some penthouse suite overlooking the city and maybe it costs $2,000 a day. And you'd re it'd be really cool to, to show all the guys you grew up with in the, in the trailer park. 
you know where you are, but you don't know where any of them are. And all the friends that were your friends a while ago, they're all gone all over town. And you're in this big old room by yourself, overlooking the city. And I'd turn on the TV and I'd, I'd watch some Christian TV and I couldn't figure out what was going on with these people. A lot of times they'd be crying. And they'd be talking about stuff that I just couldn't relate to. And I didn't know, man. Now, I don't know what's going on in your life, but I know that at one point I kept being drawn. I knew there's something holy going on in these people's life. And even though I couldn't relate to all of it, and you might not can relate to me, but if you can, I'm telling you there is a God and he's in love with you. And he loves you so much, he sent his only begotten son. And if you would just simply believe on him and then let people know, that's all the Bible says you have to do to be born again. Believe that, that God loves you enough to send Jesus and accept Jesus as your savior and as your Lord and master. If you do that, all you have to do is tell people you did that and you are born again. And whether you understand that or not, whether you intellectually comprehend what that means or not, it'll still happen. God Almighty who created the universe and who created you will come into you by His Spirit and He will start recreating everything in your life, the way you view life, the way you enjoy life, the way you spend your time, the way you treat others. Your life will get better every day as mine has been for these last uh, 38 years since I got born again. Will you let me pray with you? If you don't mind, I just want to lead you in a prayer right quick and it will change your life. Say this with me. Father God, I believe in Jesus and I receive your son as my Lord and Savior. God, you know I've sinned and I'm asking you to forgive me and let me start my life over again. I believe that you are real and by the grace of God, I'm going to start serving you. Thank you for forgiving me, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now go tell anybody the decision you just made, whoever you trust. If it's your mama, your sister, your wife, your husband, your child, or your best friend, just tell somebody that you prayed and asked God for a chance to start over, and he gave it to you because he did. Praise God, you're a new creature. I'll see you in heaven someday. How awesome is that? God bless you. I'm going to be praying for you. If there's anything we can do at mylon.org, www.mylon.org, I'm doing everything I can all day, every day to make getting from here to heaven as easy as possible. Check it out. Check out the videos. Check out. And if you think we can do a TV show about something, that if you're already born again and you got an idea, you want us to teach on something, send us the information. Let us know what you want to know about. We'll study it up in the Word and we'll do a show on it if we can. We'll do everything we can to be a blessing to you and to the body of Christ because God loves you and we do too. God bless you, man. I'll see you on the road to freedom.